Hey, my name is Vince, and today we're going to be doing the science of skateboarding. So the trick that we're going to be doing today is called the ollie, and it's probably one of the most paramount tricks involved in skateboarding. It was invented in 1976, and allows you to raise the skateboard up without using your hands. Now, how do we do this? Well, in principle, it's all stored in the energy in your legs, right? And we can think of your legs as a system of springs. The energy in a spring is given as one half times the spring constant, which is unique to every type of spring, times the displacement squared. Or if you want to translate that into a force applied, the force applied by a spring is equal to that same spring constant times the total displacement. So how do these forces apply when it comes to actually performing an ollie? Well, starting out, what we're going to have is two forces about the rear wheels. Okay? So the rear wheel would be considered our pivot point in order to take the sum of our torques. All right, so our first force is going to be the spring force, which is stored in our legs. The second force is the force of gravity. Now, because the, the torque applied in by the spring is much higher than that of gravity, the entire board is going to rotate about that point in that direction, making the board go up. And the second step of the alley, what's going to happen is there's going to be two separate forces, the force of gravity still, and the lateral force applied by the front foot instead of the rear foot. Now, since the center of mass is now our pivot point, the distance to the force of gravity is zero, so there's no torque created by gravity. Therefore, there's going to be an action creating the board to level out and spin up in this direction. And then we can land, hopefully, the board. <laughs> now, suppose we were traveling at a constant velocity in the x direction, and then we apply this ollie. Well, we can write down a system of parametric equations describing the motion of the board. First, in the x direction, x is going to be constant velocity, so our displacement is going to be just the velocity times the time. In the y direction, it's a little bit more complicated because we have to take into account the acceleration due to gravity, which is minus 1 half times the acceleration of gravity times the time squared, plus the initial velocity in y times the time. If we combine these two parametric equations, we can solve for an equation of height in terms of our distance y, x traveled. Uh, when we combine these two, we can also take the derivative of it and solve for the maximum position uh, of height that we get when we land the jump. So here's a little depiction of me. Uh, if you'll notice, this minus 1 half gx squared term is what defines this as an inverse parabola. Uh, so that's pretty much all the physics behind this trick. Let's go try it out.